Let's take a look at an example now that wants us to add two rational expressions together. Uh, here we have a rational expression uh, x over x minus 1. Uh, we're trying to add to that the rational expression 2x minus 1 uh, divided by the uh, quadratic trinomial x squared minus 3x plus 2. Um, so adding rational expressions is really just a, a complicated adding fractions problem. To be able to add fractions, you must have common denominators. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor everything that I can, just kind of so I can see what, uh, what factors I'm working with in my denominator. And then I'm going to have to multiply uh, one or both of these fractions by something to make them have common denominators before I can go ahead and do the addition uh, with that. So uh, this first... Uh, term here. It doesn't look like I can do much with that. I have x over x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around that just so we're viewing that as, a, that as one piece, as one factor of the denominator there. <clears throat> and we're trying to add to that this 2x minus 1. Um, I'll, I'll put parentheses around that as well so we're viewing that as a factor. And then on the bottom here we have x squared minus 3x plus 2, which that can factor into two linear um, binomials. It'll be x minus 2 and x minus 1. So now that I have this, so my denominators are in their factored form, I can look at both denominators here and see that they already have the factor of x minus 1 in common. That's good news. I don't have to do anything uh, to make them have that in common. But they do not both have a factor of x minus 2. This one does, this one does not. So what I need to do is that to get common denominators here, I need to take this first fraction and I need to multiply its numerator and denominator by this factor of x minus 2. So let me go ahead and put an x minus 2 here and an x minus 2 there, like that. By multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing, I have not changed the value of the fraction. Now they have common denominators, so I can go ahead and write this together as a single fraction. So I have... Uh, x times x minus 2 plus 2x minus 1, like that, all divided by x minus 1, x minus 2. Okay, so now I have it written together as one fraction just over that denominator. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and distribute uh, in my numerator. I can have x squared minus 2x, I'm going to distribute here, and then plus 2x minus 1, all divided by x minus 1, x minus 2. There's no point to actually multiplying that out in the denominator at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and want to combine like terms in our numerator and see um, if that produces anything that is factorable. If it does, maybe we can cancel a factor from the numerator with a factor of the denominator. So hold off on trying to do any multiplication in the denominator at this point. Um, if you do, it might be something that you have to undo later to simplify, and we certainly wouldn't want to create more work um, for ourselves. Running out of room on the board, so I'm going to jump back up here to the top and kind of erase this over here. I'll leave this last piece so I can see what I'm writing. I need to combine my like terms in my numerator. Uh, this minus 2x and plus 2x right here are going to cancel each other out, so I'm left with x squared minus 1 in my numerator, and in my denominator, I'm left with x minus 1, x minus 2. Now, I don't know about you, but I see that numerator, and I recognize that that's a difference of squares. I know how to factor a difference of squares, uh, so let me do that now. That would factor as x plus 1, x minus 1. My denominator has x minus 1, x minus 2. I see a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, so that can cancel out this x minus 1 with that x minus 1. And finally, I'm left with just x plus 1 over x minus 2. Sometimes you have to multiply both fractions by um, certain factors to be able to get common denominators, so it could be a little bit more work than that. Sometimes the numerator isn't factorable, so it doesn't simplify any further than that. And you could go ahead and multiply out your denominator if you wanted, or you could go ahead and leave it. It doesn't, uh, doesn't matter as long as there's no factors that, uh, that can cancel out, then it's considered simplified. Uh, the last thing that we haven't talked about here yet are the restrictions on the variables. Um, at uh, many points in time in these problems, I had x minus 1 and x minus 2 in the denominator, those factors. So I need to make sure that x does not equal any value that would make those factors equal to 0. So if I had an x minus 1 in my denominator, I know that x can't be positive 1. 
If I have an x minus 2 in my denominator, I know that x can't be positive 2. If it were either of those things, my denominator would be equal to 0. So x cannot equal 1 or 2 for my restrictions on variables. So here is our simplified expression. Here's our restrictions on variables. I hope that helps.